Yo, what's up? What's up, family? Welcome to the Inspired by Christ podcast. I'm your host, Courtney Goff. Man, we got a special guest on today. But before we get into that, as always, make sure that you like, subscribe. We're coming to you guys, giving you some more content, uh, conversation with everyday regular people to inspire people across the world to get closer to Christ. So without further ado, man, let's jump right into it. Today's guest, man, I got my big brother, my, my blood brother. You know how some people say, oh, this is my brother, this is my brother. No, this is my real <clears throat> brother, my real older yes, brother. Sir. And um, he on the call right now, man. We just, I'm excited to have him on. His name is LeVar Goff. And uh, before, look, he's not going to go into all his accolades, but my brother has done a <laughs> lot of great things that has inspired me. And so just from growing up, he has been a role model for me that allowed me to be the man I am today. Um, he taught me so much with us being two years apart. Um, I just always had somebody that was in front of me to learn from. He always took those opportunities to just stop and tell me like, hey, don't do that. Or, hey, do this. And that helped me in my mm -hmm. life. And I just want to take that moment just to say, thank you, bro. I appreciate you and I love you. This ain't nothing I would just say right now. But as always, mm -hmm. I say to you, so welcome to the to the podcast, my brother, LeVar God, man. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Yes. Hey, great intro. I appreciate it, man. Yep. Love you, man. Yeah, love you, man. Already know. you already know. Thanks, you already for, know. thanks for having me. Hello, everybody out there. Let's go. All right. So. Um, as you know, we just go into the mm -hmm. question, just do a little bit of background to a lot of people to just to get to know a little bit about you. And and I know my brother just recently just got married, man, in St. Lucia to his beautiful bride, um, <laughs> uh, my yes, sister in law. Indeed. And so, um, you know, congratulations to that. So I just really want to really thank you, thank you. that topic right there, just to <clears throat> just let the people understand, you know, how you feel like. Tell us how you feel with just getting married, like going through the process and finding your person. Like, what is that? What is that? How, how are you feeling right now? Because you really like only like 30, 40 days in right now. So how does it feel mm -hmm. being a married man, finding your wife, all that stuff? I feel, feel good, man. I feel, feel great, man. I'm blessed. I'm thankful, man. You know, God bless me with a, with a beautiful person inside and out, man. So I'm truly thankful and I'm just looking forward to this ride to keep going, you know, through life with her, man, and our family. So yeah, I'm loving it. That's what's riding, up. I'm just riding the wave right now, man. That's what's with up. God, you know? That's mm -hmm. what's up. That's what's up. Look, welcome to the club, man. Welcome to the club. Married life, husband life. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. man. Um when God brings two people together and, and especially when they're on the same accord, going in the same direction. So that's beautiful. Yes, sir. Um, mm -hmm. so Thank even you. going even a step towards that, I know that there was a lot of preparation from yourself, like just getting your mind, your spirit, just ready for marriage. So that's my, my next question. I want to ask you, like, what advice do you have for a person that's like, you know what? I'm ready to get married. I'm ready to get married. Like, and sometimes people say they want to get married, but then they don't really know what marriage is about and what things you need to do, prepare yourself. So what advice mm -hmm. do you have for that person, like in preparation to get into that day and being married and, and stuff like that. What advice do you have for that person? Great question. I would say um, if you serious about getting married, you want to be married, whether male or female, then you should be acting as if you married already before you marry. And you should be doing the things to prepare yourself for marriage. So, um, you know, having multiple different people on the line, that's got to cut that out. You know, you, you got to deny yourself of a lot of the things that, you know, that you might want or that your flesh might want, because that's, that's what marriage is and marriage, you're going to be living a life of denial. You know what I mean? So that would be something I would say you definitely uh sh should be diving into the word, diving in, um, following God, you know, more strongly so that God can help prepare you even better for marriage so that, you know, um, so you're better prepared for what's to come. You know what I mean? Your God's going to have to prune some things off of you, just like he's going to do while you're in marriage, but even before marriage, you know, about changing your mindset. You cannot change your mindset without God. You know, you can't change it properly, you know. So in order to know what God wants for you and how he wants you to think, you have to dive into his word. So that would be the probably the best advice that I could say. So you could be prepared for your, whoever your future husband is or your future wife. That's some gems. Mm -hmm. That's that's some nuggets. And that's so true. With, with with me being being six years, being married, I went through that same exact process. Like 
like mm-hmm. you said, cutting off all the numbers, all the options. You got to cut that off and really just focus, one, on God, like you said, with diving in the word and getting closer and understanding what God wants from us and the purpose as a husband, <clears throat> um, as a leader in your house and things of that nature. But then now focusing on just one person. And mm-hmm. sometimes in society growing up, we had these thoughts like, oh, you don't have all these women or girls, city girls, you want to have all the men. But in all actuality, mm-hmm. We're designed to be with one person. You know what I mean? If you look right. at the Bible and understand the Bible and get the understanding, um, that's where it all roots in is having that relationship with God. And from that point, we know how to be a husband. We know how to be a wife and be able to right. come together as one. So, no, that's that's, mm. that's that. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's good. And also, I wanted to add, too, that um, when you dive into the word, not only do you know what God expects from you, but you will know what God is expecting from your partner. So hey. whoever he sends, Hello. you will know, you know, so you'll be able to, just like I said in our podcast, you'll be able to eliminate the busters. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, for real, you'll be able to recognize red flags. You'll be able to be able to eliminate people who are yeah. not, you know, the right person. So now you're not wasting your time. You're not wasting years of your life, months of your life. You're able to just go forward. You can, you know, block the nonsense out and then whoever God has for you, you are able to see what that is and now you're not wasting time, you know. So I wanted to add that in too. Great nah, no, 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 that's you. that's true. I even want to go pat further into that because I know we talked about the red flags. We can't we can't mistake the 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 red flags for six flags. <laughs> like this ain't no amusement park. <laughs> oh, yeah, <park. that's> <laughs> this ain't no amusement park. So we need to make sure that when you're in that dating season. That you really recognize yes. what's going on. And sometimes, like you said, to even take it a step further, is that some people get so comfortable. We've all been there before. Were you in a relationship? Mm-hmm. Like, why am I even in this relationship? I don't try to break up three, four, five, six, seven times, but we still coming back together. Because right. times as humans, we like normalcy. We don't want to change. We don't want change. So we like, oh, I've been right. with five years. Well, I'm mm-hmm. not well. I've been this person for three years or six years. Hey, if it ain't mm-hmm. what God want for you, all you're doing is putting yourself to misery. Now, if you're married, that's a whole nother thing. That's different. Right, talking, right. I'm talking about pre-marriage. You right, date right. Somebody, don't waste your time. And that's something that I, I I didn't play around. I know we mean you the same. I got mm-hmm. I, I'm having a mental checklist in my head. So I'm not even getting to the point of wasting time on dates and none of that because if you're not hitting right. this, Boxes, we not even going on a date. Ain't no reason for me to have right. a conversation, text, call, FaceTime, none of that, because you ain't you ain't right. even lining up. Like, right. Yeah, right. See, but see, but see that's the that's denial right there. See, that's you started that's preparing God preparing you was preparing you already before marriage. Like you had every you could have did that if you want to. If you want to date people that don't line up in the box uh that mm-hmm. God say. But you like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to deny myself of this person, that person, that person, because I know that this is not going to be my wife. Okay. But uh, immature mind is going to still be like, all right, you know what? I'm dating. So I'm going to date everybody. But there's no sense in dating somebody that's not going to be your wife or your husband. You're just wasting your time, wasting their time. And you're going to get tangled up into some nonsense as well. So right. it's really no point in that. And then um, it was something else you said, too, that reminded me um. Uh, it's so much stuff that we could talk about on this topic. Like, I already know. It's oh, dating with a purpose. Dating with a purpose. That's yeah. another thing. So you got to date with a purpose. If you date with a purpose, then you're going to find who you're supposed to be with. You know, you allow God to uh, bring into your life who's supposed to be there. You know, that's so, yeah, that's a fact. Mm-hmm. And you're right, because you can end up tangled and twisted or something that you ain't trying to get into. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. And then on top of that, like how you said, like mm-hmm. the purpose, you have when you have a purpose, that's what anything. If you define what the purpose is, what the object, that's why people have a business case when they or they right. have a business proposal. That because mm. they know the investment that's going into it. Like if I'm investing X amount of money and time, we need to have a business plan, a business proposal in place of what we're doing. So the same goes right. for your relationship. Your relationship is more valuable than a building being made or a business being started. This is mm. so you got to yep. make sure you have that that dating with a purpose and planning. Look, just to let y'all know that that book is coming real soon. Dating with a purpose, yeah. with a purpose. Mm-hmm. We're gonna get with that because we had a lot of great conversations on that. Y'all have to check out some of the other podcast episodes yeah. on the page, man. Spiritual food because mm-hmm. we talk about a lot of this relationship stuff. If y'all enjoy. Yeah. But people um, hungry for that, so yeah, great point about you. It's, it's so true because even <clears throat> now you see you got me going now, but see, even further because mm-hmm. 
if you have a date with a purpose, now that means that's marriage with a purpose. Now that means you have kids with a purpose. So then now that mm. you're not dating, you have a baby with somebody, now y'all not together. You know what I mean? Like now that right. house is stronger because you got two people mm -hmm. together, the kids growing mm -hmm. up, that's a, you know what I mean? Like that's yeah, the, yeah. So like even you think like, oh, dating with a purpose don't have nothing to do with your kids. No, it do have something to do with your kids, with the future of right. how do you, how your life flow. It's so many layers to mm -hmm. that. That's why God created the manual. He told us what to do. We just got to be able to manual. follow the book. You know what I mean? So, no, that's a fact. Amen. That's a I fact. like that. I like how you how you, uh, how you you articulated that business proposal. I like that. That was good. <laughs> I, I try to do it. I do it. <laughs> when I can do it. <laughs> I, I, I dibbles, I dabbles. <laughs> hey, yo, but, all right, so then my next question is, with you being a father – to my to my smart handsome nephews man um look future mm -hmm. 20 20 27 20 28 20, 29 d1 yeah, yeah. Th 36 actually 38 but um, <laughs> what's what's your best part of being a father like fatherhood like what's your your, your best man. thing about that great question so many but first thing that come to mind is just watching the growth man mm -hmm. Watching and seeing the growth physically and um, mentally, just seeing them grow, man, and spiritually too, because uh, I'm real big on that with with my kids. So just watching them grow, man, seeing a little you, and uh, just seeing them grow into their own person every day, it's mm -hmm. an amazing thing, man. I love it. I love it. That's probably, but that's to answer your question. That's that's the first thing that comes to mind. But I, I love that part of it, you know, yeah. and building that bond, that bond up with them. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's beautiful and i i agree like i i think there's there's nothing like it and um even how we were talking about the other day like i, I feel like that with being a becoming a father and being blessed to be mm -hmm. a father it's like it allows me to get a better understanding when i'm reading the bible about my relationship mm -hmm. with god and how he loved me because i think about the mm -hmm. love i have for my child and god says that his love for us is beyond what we can mm -hmm. do so it's right, not close. Right. So that allows me to in those moments when you have those downfall moments, you might get depressed, you might be in a low state. You like, you know mm -hmm. what? He loved me. <laughs> he loved right. me. Take me back. I just got dusted off and going back on by my business, or if it's something that I need, mm -hmm. you know, give words yep. to him, cast all my worries at his feet and going by my business. So it's like Amen. Oh, shout out to my sister, going about your business. Um, but <laughs> but no, like I just think like that's just important. Like, but I, I agree. I yeah. love when kids grow, but it ties back to really, you know, God is deeper. Everything that's around is tied back to God. I think it's just so deep to everything. So deep. Yeah. So deep. that's great. Yeah. yeah. I'm with you on that. All right, so now we're going to move into our four core questions, you know. So okay. the first question I have is, um, what made you give your life to Christ? Mm, great question, man. Well, you know, as you know, we brothers, we grew up in church. Me and Courtney grew up in church with our other brother, Calvin Jr. as well. Um, our family, our parents, they laid that foundation down from the beginning to believe in Christ. Um, so that's something we we always did. We always believed in Christ. We always prayed. But as you know, from the transition from being a child to a grown up, you're gonna go through life. You know what I mean. So, um, following Christ as a child compared to being grown is two totally different things. You don't really know as much when you're younger. You don't know about life experiences. You know what I mean. So once yeah. I became an adult or a young adult, I believed in God. I believed in Christ, but I wasn't living. You know, I didn't have the fruit of that. You know, obviously my right. lifestyle was not of that, but I always believed in God, always tr uh, believed in Christ. But um, I would say what, <clears throat> what truly brought me to Christ was trials and tribulations, man. You mm -hmm. know, sometimes, you know, life hits you upside the head. You know, you keep getting, and, and, and most of the time, like I tell you before, it'd be us. We'd be the ones, you know. Yeah, that's a fact. Who's, who's bringing, bringing, the, bringing the, the extra drama, or the extra stuff into life. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what that was something, you know, I felt like God sat me down um, and 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 I, it's like I just you go all these other places to and go to look for all these other things. But it's like the guy like, oh, I'm right here. What's up? Yeah. And I just felt felt like, I, you know, just I just I, I just broke down to my knees and was just like, yo, I got to. I just felt like God wanted me to change. Like I just felt it in like I just need to change my, the way I think. And, yeah. and it wasn't an overnight thing. And, you know, God, I'm not perfect today, but I'll tell you what, I follow Christ and I'm showing the fruit of it. But 
at that moment, I was like, all right, I don't know. And then some sermon popped up on my YouTube. And, mm -hmm. and from there, I still remember the pastor, man, Pastor Darby. And I started watching it and it was over from there. It just, I just felt God just start pruning me, pruning me certain things I was doing. Uh, he was taking the taste away from me, not where right. I don't want to do it no more, and, or I felt convicted. I'm like, and then I'm started reading the Bible, and I'm like, oh, I didn't know this was it. I didn't know this was it. Oh, I gotta forgive. I can't hold a grudge. I like, all this stuff start coming up. So yeah. then that's when I got, I felt God started changing me, and then I just wanted, I just wanted to follow Christ, like truly follow Christ. You know, so it's it, and then then it transformed to where it's like, okay, I gotta dedicate my life to Christ. Yeah. But that's how it came about the through trials and tribulation that I brought on myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's, See, and that's where you said, like, from having faith as a kid to a young adult to a, an adult, it's just like you go through those different phases. But the one thing, like the Bible said, like, teach, train your kids up in the way that they should go. Even if they depart, they got to come back. So even, right, right. shout out to mom and dad. And even our mm -hmm. grandparents Shout out, passed, that, Shout passed out, that down so then that we got that. So then that's something right, that right. had that foundation. So even if you veer off and we both done took and made our own decisions, where like you said, the most of the time, the stuff that's happened in our life is from our own doing, from the decisions. Our past decisions. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. Like And some of the things like decisions that we make can impact us for a long time, for the rest of our life. Mm -hmm. It all depends on the things mm -hmm. that we have and the grace that's there. Because we have right. a lot of things where you could be dead, you could be, you know, our lives could be so much different, but God's great yeah. mercy, his Thank love God. covered us in his favor. And I'm just thankful. That's why I sometimes I'll be telling my wife, I'll be like, I'll be telling all I'm like, yo, man, like, Thank you, God. Like, like you know, yeah. like for real. Thank like, you, even sometimes you know the mm -hmm. devil try to make you complain about certain small things. You like, man, right? That's nothing. Right. There, nothing. I'm thankful, yeah. man. Mm -hmm. We blessed. So, no, that that's Amen. beautiful to, to hear that. To hear that, you know what I mean? Because I think that's the big thing that I really want people to take away from that. You have to have take <clears> ownership <throat> of your doing for the things that happen in your life, and once you do that, then now you yeah. can get to forgiveness you can now repent and realize okay i gotta make wow. some changes and turn back towards god so and that, that was amen i right don't i just had to chime in on that that was that was spot nah, that was, amen that was right you you right amen i totally agree with you man it's about taking accountability i don't know why that's so hard for a lot of people to do actually i know why it's so hard because you gotta look in the mirror and you know and talk to yourself about self <laughs> but it's a fact. that's the main thing that's <laughs> but that's don't want to do that, man. But, yeah, but look, <laughs> but now imagine, imagine if you there's some people who can have that conversation with themselves. But if you a person that mm -hmm. you don't have no self awareness, you talking to yourself like, yo, you doing a good job, but you get yeah, stuck inside it, the yeah. head, you right. you're wilding, you doing stuff you ain't supposed to be doing. You like, man, you doing a good job. You looking at yourself in the mirror, you right, good job, keep right up. You, but, right. but you're, you know how you do what you about to do. So it's like you gotta have mm -hmm. self awareness. And then the self self accountability as well because you gotta be aware to say mm -hmm. I'm out of pocket to get back mm -hmm. in pocket and then ask for forgiveness, repent, all those steps. So no, I definitely yeah. the people don't want to do that, and we all don't. So I ain't gonna say because yeah, yeah, yeah. we all do. You know what I mean? So yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, and that's the importance of having. That's where God come into play because it's like when we have that foundation, we believing in God, following God. Following Christ, he's the one who is going to convict us. You know what I'm saying? Once we get that conviction, he's so, going to help us to where we check ourselves. It's like, you got to check yourself. It's like, uh, you know what? <laughs> Holy Spirit, you know what? Yeah, you're right. All right. Yeah. I got to do better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's, a fact. Like, that's why it's important to follow God. You that's, know? A fact. that's a fact because they give you that mm -hmm. sermon of what and what not to do. Um, so my next right. question is, how does Christ inspire you? Man, Christ has inspired me in a lot of ways, but I probably say just how his positivity, man, his positivity when he was on this earth and how he wasn't he he led in love, but he wasn't no he wasn't no like 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 a um a timid person, you know. Yeah. He whatever he said, he stood on what he stood what he what he said. And um but I also like the way that he he would challenge people's thinking. Yeah. I love that about Christ, how he would challenge the way people uh, thought and made them think deeper. 
you yeah. know, to um to to get to the point that he was trying to get them yeah. to understand, e- even if that was through analogies or responding to them with a question <laughs> after they yeah. asked him a question. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I, yeah. that's what I that's that's what I really liked about about Christ for sure. Yeah. I'll say that. No, and I like that too to add on to that. Like that's my favorite part. Mm. He do that. I love the analogies in the Bible. Um, the mm. the, the the stories in there that just mm-hmm. connect everything. But then the other part that I really enjoy is the questions because people be like, well, how I get to this? <laughs> how I do this? And he'd be like, all right, I'm going to give you this question because basically he making himself discovery. Like, I'm going to ask you, you ask me a question, I'm going to ask you a question and that make you go back and think about that. Like, did that right. question, that you just asked me a right question? So no, I <laughs> definitely agree with you. I love what he did. Mm-hmm. The Bible was so good. Like, it's a whole yeah. deep, you know, movie all that in one because it's funny. Mm-hmm. Crying is good stuff. Is everything in there? But if you, it has right. a, a true story to it, so uh, my next mm-hmm. thing is: um, what advice would you have for someone who's on the fence about giving their life to Christ? Maybe it's a person mm-hmm. who, like us. They grew up in church, but they kind of, you know, they like, ah, I still want to do what I want to do. I don't want no accountability. Or a person that, like, man, maybe they're another faith, or they don't have no faith at all. What advice would you mm-hmm. have for that person to be like, yo, bring your life to Christ? Well, my advice would be, why are you on the fence? Get off the fence and come on the right <laughs> side. You need to get on the right side. You you have it. It's something, God puts something inside you where you know that God exists. You know that, and you we know that Jesus Christ walked this earth. That's a fact. Like, this is actual fact. You can research this thing now. And also, speaking of research, whether you believe in Christ, but you're on the fence, whether you don't believe in Christ, and you're on the fence, and you want to know, you have questions, okay, go research. Go research. We have, you don't even have to go to the library. You got the library right on your phone. Go do some research. I'm talking thorough research where you're not being biased. That's you it. have to go do real research because you want to find out the truth. And um, and, and you will find out the truth. You will be led to the truth. And Jesus Christ is the truth. There's only one truth. Follow Christ. Follow God. Um, That would be my advice to somebody who is on the fence. Get off the fence and come on the right side. That's a fact. That's a fact. And that's one of the things right there where you can't expect God not going to do everything for you. So like mm-hmm. to, you got to research that just like if you're going on a vacation, you're going to look up all the hotels, all the rest. Come on, man. We look everything else up. You're trying, you're right. trying to find the best bars, the best clubs, <laughs> trying to find right. clothes. You're going to go on six different websites. Oh, this, oh, they mm-hmm. got this for the outfit for the wedding. Oh, let me go to this style. Oh, they got this for the wedding. Oh, that one, $40 less. I'm going to be killing them with this. <laughs> right, <laughs> laying out the clothes in the bed. Boom! I got the, I got the shoes bow. I got the pants bow. Belt. Boom! Stops. You know, you know, you know. Went down the whole <laughs> list of different places researching what you're going to wear to an event or going on vacation, and you spent that. Mm-hmm. Money. If you spend that same amount of time that you dedicated to get that value back, you gonna that's the best value you're gonna get back once you research what, who Christ was, and then you find out that right. he deserved. That's gonna change your whole life. That value back is 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 um. It's crazy. The margin of profit is yeah. Crazy. So yeah, facts. And I want to piggyback off of that. I want to piggyback off of that. And also, um, what's more valuable than your soul? So Hello. that's what's at stake. Your soul is at stake. See, after we die, there's a heaven and there's hell. So our soul is at stake. See, right, we live in these bodies, but we are all spiritual beings. We're Hello. spirit beings. So when we die. You're going to go into the spiritual realm. You're going to go to heaven. You're going to go to hell. So it's very important to get off the fence and come onto the side of Christ so that you can get your soul saved. Because Jesus Christ died on the cross for us yeah. so that we can, so our souls can be saved. And then you live forever because oh. even after we pass away, it's going to be a new life and even heaven. After that, and after and after life, God, the Bible says that there's gonna be a whole new, there's gonna be a new world. Ooh, so new. it's very important because your soul is at stake. So don't play with your soul. That's I wanted to say that. That's a fact. And even I want to add on to that too because I was listening to the word of the other day. I was listening, reading song, listening to Psalms, and it was talking about like um, eternity and stuff. And um, mm-hmm. our, our time is short here, like vapors and things like that, right? Right. And so mm-hmm. I had to think about it, and the Holy Spirit told me, like, and I uh, said, like, 
Because right now you're like, oh, man, you 30 years old, you 40 years old, 80 years old. You're like, man, I've been here for a long time. But in all actuality, mm -hmm. what is 80 years to eternity? What is eternity. 80 years to eternity? If you, if you just what in for this life that you got right now, you're supposed to do, you're going to get eternity on the oh, other man. side. And when the Holy Spirit told me, I said, what? what I said, I said, that's mm -hmm. it. Said, you got to lock in, like you said, denial. Yeah. You got to deny your flesh of what you want and really realize mm -hmm. what's in the future. That that I want that. I don't want I right. less about all this stuff here. I want eternal life. I don't want to be a hell burned up. I want to be right. I want to be where they at. I want to be up there right. in the station. I want to talk mm -hmm. with people. I want to talk with God and just understand like all the different things right. that you can hear. So no, mm -hmm. I definitely agree with you one thousand percent. And um Amen. this this gets us to our last our last question. Um, what's your favorite mm -hmm. Bible verse and why? I mm -hmm. think I might know what it is, but I'll, I'll, let me see what you say. Yeah, you know, you know what I got. I got a lot of different mm -hmm. uh, favorite Bible verses, but I'm gonna say two. I know you said one. I'm gonna say two. You what? know this one, Exodus fourteen fourteen. Aye, aye. That's my favorite one because it's very straight to the point. God will fight for you. Hello. Real simple. <laughs> but a lot of times in life, as um as humans. We want to have control, mm -hmm. but see what I found uh, since walking with God, man, is that once I found that verse, I literally was like, oh, so I could just, I literally could just, just get it to him. <laughs> like literally <laughs> just be like, hey, yo, you know what? God, I don't want to deal with this. This is what's going on. I get such and such to you. I get such and such to you. And well, you know it, it's, it's handled. It's handled, but handled the best way possible. See, yeah. we handle it. We might think we handling it we the not. best way possible, but we can't even fathom the way God gonna handle it. So yeah. I would say Exodus 14, 14 for sure. And then Romans 8, 28, you yeah. know that one. God works all things together for good for those who love the Lord. And then those who are called according to his, his purpose. His you know, a lot of people like to quote that, but they forget about his purpose. His purpose. <laughs> so I would say those two. Yeah, I would say those two for sure. What about, what about you? I, I know you. I know you asked the question. But I'm gonna hit you. What, what, yeah, what yeah. about you? So mine is always. I like. I like Romans eight twenty eight. I, I like that one. And to your mm -hmm. point, you know, always forget about the his purpose. That last part. Um, mm -hmm. it's always like my 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 go to verse. Um, I also think about if God. Is Amen. Good, if God is for us, who can be against us? Be against so, us. That's Amen. something that I always lean on. So whether I'm at work or. Um, just praying for you know professionally, spiritually, personally. Like I'm always, I like have that mindset. I'm like, yo, if, if God is with me, and I know, so I I break that verse down. Like if God is with me, who can be against me? Who who can right. be against me, right? So I look at that from a perspective. Right. And say, okay, so God is inside me. He's in my heart. I know that. Yep. He already told mm -hmm. me. It's written there. It's there. So that mm -hmm. means wherever I go, He there with me. So he right there, you know, can't nobody be against me. So that just give me the right. confidence, not the confidence in myself, but the confidence I know in what you're saying. that's inside of me. You know what I'm saying? So right, that's yeah, I know what you're saying. Me. Yeah, nah, and even I know you. Amen. Know, working out for even for the people here, like so I, that gives me my, my my confidence, and I would say those are like two that I could think of off the top of my head that I definitely definitely do. Um, think about, but then also too from a from a marriage standpoint, always mm -hmm. think about um, um, husbands. Um, love your love your wife as Christ loved the church. Christ loved the church. You know that he died yeah. and gave up his life for it. So that's something I always put on my noggin as a husband. Like, okay, I gotta die. Like you said, denial. I gotta denial, die. Yeah. To what I want to do to be like, yo, what mm -hmm. my wife want to do? Let me make sure she good. Mm -hmm. I'm loving her the right way. Then she gonna respect me and love me the right way, but I don't. That's true. I'm not doing it in the sense of her wanting to do it back, but just doing it all right because I just I love my wife. So that's another one that's mm -hmm. with me. And then another marriage one that I give for husbands is um under I can't remember the exact verse, but it's like um to be to be kind to our wives as a weaker vessel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. Be kind mm -hmm. to our wife as a weaker vessel and do not deal with her harshly. Because right, right. I won't hear our prayers, and when I read oh, our prayers, yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm like, hold on. So if I, so if I don't do what I'm supposed to do with her, I'm being hard to her. You're not gonna hear my prayer. Okay, you so, might not hear my prayers. Yeah. Oh man, hold Go on. Let's get this said. right. Let's get this right, girl. <laughs> Come here. 
You know what? You know, I, you know I ain't even mad no more. I don't know what we be mad about, girl. <laughs> so yeah, so those would be yeah. my ones from my husband, but then the general stance too. So I don't know if you got a couple more if you want to add on to that. We got a few more minutes. No, nah, hey man, yeah, I definitely them 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 definitely two that those come right to my noggin, man. If I'm if I'm you know if anything. And uh, we might not be seeing eye to eye or something, boy. That come to my eye, like I mean, to my head, like, oh, all right, you know what? That conviction come, like, ah, uh, all right, all right, God, I hear you, I hear you, man. Yeah. All right, let me, let me do, let me, let me get right, let me get right, <laughs> because we not perfect, you know what I'm saying? We humans, you know what I mean? So we're gonna miss the mark sometimes, but the fact, uh, it's about obedience, you know, it's about obedience, yielding to the Holy Spirit when that when that does come up, because those. Nuggets, those verses that you're saying, those are good reminders to have as husbands and as wives. But I just wanted to say about that verse, like you said, about not answering prayers. I know wives be, they be talk, you know, you watch something online and uh, people, a lot of women have a lot of issues with the, uh, the submission. Yeah, exactly. Hey, man, God, God said that. But also, <laughs> come on, man, not getting your prayers answered? Come on now. Come on, man. That's real. That's real deal. Holy feel right there, that's, man. That's but, real deal. I'll, that's real deal. Like I, I, I say all the time to all, you know, you say it to your wife because it's like, okay, you think about submission, but I have to also submit to God. I gotta, we yeah. gotta submit to each other, even though mm -hmm. I'm a leader as a male. Right, right. I gotta submit to God. You gotta submit to God, but He still has mm -hmm. the order of how that goes. It's an order. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And also, like we just said, the verse, like, uh, look, husbands love your wife at Christ of the church, and He died for. Her. You ain't got to die in this equation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ain't got to die in this equation. He ain't say nothing about the wife dying. That, that right there, that's the end of, that's the, end of the, the this kind of playing out on the scale. Somebody got to die here, and I got to die. So I'm just telling you. I see, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. <laughs> you, see, you, see what I'm you see what I'm getting? I'm, I'm, I'm dropping. I'm dropping. I'm, I'm picking up what you put down. I got you. Yeah, man. So, but I, mm -hmm. I think even to... Something that you just said, um, what about the whole marriage thing? Um, even tie back to what we said about with dating with a purpose early on, like those things you have to have in the beginning. Yeah. Like, I'll be talking about right those you know, scriptures and those understandings. You those mm -hmm. are the type of conversations you gotta have before marriage with before. the person you're trying to rock with for the rest of your life because now y'all have to have that foundational understanding from the very beginning like i remember mm -hmm. like dating and you like the girl you texting the girl you like oh yeah what's up like you believe in god and they'd be like oh yeah i go to church sometimes i ain't actually about going to church <laughs> mm, right right you know, right so on to the next one you know what i'm saying Red like, <laughs> like you 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 make you miss it you missing the point you <laughs> <laughs> you missing it but it's like that's where a lot of times you can weed out a lot of those people by that's asking it. the right question you got to ask the right yeah. question okay so you had said something that made me want yep. to back to that and talk about marriage so just want to throw mm -hmm. that out there um got a couple great more points left. is there any last things you want to share advice or things you want to give people or leave people with with this episode man I think I said it when when about the being on the fence thing about being on the fence. I think that that should have hit him in the head real hard. Whoever on the fence, they shouldn't be on the fence no more. Because that I know that that's gonna make somebody think right there. I don't know who that's for, but that's that's for somebody. Stop playing with your soul, man. Come on, come on to this side, man. I promise you, life's gonna get get. It's, it's, your life's gonna change for the better, man. Your life's gonna change for the better. It's just you're gonna see life through a whole different lens mm -hmm. once you take um. Once you realize the seriousness of life and your soul, and uh, once you start following Christ, not saying you're not going to have trials and tribulations, but trust me, it's much better uh, riding through life with, with God, with, with, your, with Christ, your creator. I mean, That's that don't make sense. That's like, why would you not ride through life with the person who made you? To me, that just don't make no sense. But again, okay. you know, I know everybody don't grow up the same where, where, where God is instilled in them. So mm -hmm. I'm um I'm very understanding to that. But also the Bible says that everybody gonna have opportunity. Like God gave everybody the opportunity to hear his word, hear his gospel. So yeah. there's really no excuse in them. Right now you if you're watching this and you on the fence, this is your this is your sign. Get off the fence. Go do some research right now. As soon as it's over, go do some research. Ooh. 
I uh, guarantee you, you're going you're gonna to see uh, just what Christ is all about. And um, your life will never be the same. It's going to change for the better. Trust me. I know that 100 percent. No doubt in my mind. That's a fact. Look, we're going to end on that note because that was powerful and the people need to definitely resonate that. So if you've been locked in watching this, make sure that you like, subscribe, and share with somebody you never know. Like subscribe. Inspiration to get people closer, mm -hmm. closer to Christ. So look, bro, I appreciate you coming on. Great conversation. Um, look, man, I appreciate y'all all watching. Dude. Watching another episode, man, we're going to continue to keep pumping these out, inspiring many people across the world. And while I have y'all, yes, look, I just recently launched two new books. So two new workbooks mm -hmm. right here available yes. now on Amazon. Both of these books that so we have, the first one is a youth mentor one-on-one, -on -one, 52 mm -hmm. character building workbook for middle school and high school students. Perfect for back to school right here. Second one that yes. we got. We got here, same one, 52 weeks, but this one is a Sunday school edition. So this allows the kids to get a focus each week for the entire year. We're also getting a Bible yeah. first. And just, again, opportunity. This can be self, either one of these books can be self-directed or it can be with their parent, a teacher, mm -hmm. or a mentor. So if you've got a group that you're working on, perfect resource for them, available on Amazon right now. And um, if you can't find them by the title, just go right to my website, www.littlebrotherinspires.com. Go to the books right there for you. So, uh, man, I appreciate mm -hmm. y'all. As always, man, y'all have a great day. Let it be a blessing to you and give God all the glory. To God be the glory. Yeah. Amen.